Singapore's case is unique, even amongst countries with <laughs> colonial backgrounds. We do not have one press, but four major ones in four different languages, catering to four different segments of the population. In Chinese, the majority, Malay, Tamil, and English, which is the language of a small educated British subject class. Each has different key values and worldviews. In the past, the English press took the standpoint of the colonial government. The Chinese press promoted Chinese language, culture, and chauvinism looking to China for inspiration. The Malay press agitated for Malay rights and privileges and promoted Malay nationalism, identifying itself with the Malay Muslim communities of Malaysia and Indonesia. The Tamil press maintained ties of the local Tamil community with the mother country, Tamil Nadu, in India. Now imagine an island one-fifth the size of Rhode Island. One-fifth the size of Rhode Island. Just over 200 square miles. Inhabited by two and a half million people with over half its adults, first generation immigrants. People born in China, in India, in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Indonesia, and the rest of the archipelago. 75% are Chinese from seven major clan and dialect groups springing from South and Southeastern China. 15% Malays and Indonesians from the archipelago, 10% Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, Sri Lankans, Burmese, and Eurasians. We have never been one community. For decades, we coexisted in separate segments of the island demarcated by the British for disparate immigrant groups. From these unpromising beginnings, we have had to try to build one nation.